Hey boys and girls, we've got the June 2010 Regents exam here for New York State. We're on page two. Let's do this thing. A baseball player runs 27.4 meters from the batter's box to first base. What do you want to bet that's the actual distance for a real baseball diamond? He overruns first base by about three meters. So he goes 27.4. He overruns it by three meters. Oh, well, he better return back. So he goes back three meters. Compared to the total distance traveled, which would be 27.4 plus 6, so that's 33.4. The magnitude of the player's total displacement, which is 27.4, would be, so they're asking about the displacement, it would be 6 meters shorter. 3 meters shorter, no. 3 meters longer, no. 6 meters longer. The displacement would be the shorter of the two. There's the answer. Okay. Boy, this is an easy test. Okay, a motorboat, which has a speed of 5 meters per second in still water, is heading east. So it's going east 5 meters per second. Uh, the river is flowing south at 3.3 meters per second. What would be the magnitude of the boat's resultant velocity with respect to the starting point? So uh, here's its actual velocity. It's going to be more than 3.3. It's going to be more than 5. But look at this. Even if it was going south, if the boat was going with the current, it would be 8.3. 5 plus 3.3. Uh, but it's not. So it's got to be 6. Now, obviously, uh, the resultant is equal to the square root of uh, a squared plus b squared. Well, that's A and B, uh, but we don't really need it. We can solve it that way. Oh, man, we're on a roll. All right, a car traveling on a straight road at 15 meters per second. So I'm going to graph this. It starts at 15 meters per second. It speeds up to 21 meters per second in a time of 12 seconds. So it starts here, it gets up to there in 12 seconds. It wants to know the total distance. Well, it's going to be VIT plus 1 half AT squared. That'll do it. But uh, let's see what we can do here. Now, if I look at this, if I go 15 for 12 seconds, that's going to be about 180. So this distance is 180. If I were to go, so it's got to be more than 180. But if I were to travel 21 meters per second for 12 seconds, that would be 252. That would be, you know, if I did the whole thing. So it's got to be less than 252. So that's the answer. Man, no formulas yet. Just figuring it out. Well, our luck is broke. A uh, kilogram baseball. So we know the mass of the baseball is 0.149 kilograms. It's moving at an initial velocity of 15 meters per second. It's brought to rest in a time of 0 0.04 seconds, which means the velocity final is zero, which means the change in velocity is also 15 meters per second. And um, they want to know the force. Force is mass times acceleration. And uh, acceleration is change in velocity divided by time. So the force is mass times change in velocity divided by time. I guess I need a calculator. And I'm getting something like 56, 55.8, but that's close enough. Um, so there you go. Question 5. Which body is in equilibrium? Equilibrium means that the net force is zero or that there's zero acceleration. If there's a force acting on a mass, will accelerate. A satellite moving around the Earth in a circular orbit. Nope. Always an inward force acting on the thing to change its direction. Uh, which body is in equilibrium? A cart rolling down a frictionless incline. Now, if that happens, it's going to be accelerating because of gravity. An apple falling freely towards the surface of the Earth. That's also accelerating. It's the same one as that one. A block sliding at constant velocity. No acceleration across a tabletop. That's the correct answer. No acceleration. All right, question six. As shown in the diagram below, a student standing on the top of a roof 50 meters high 
kicks a stone at a horizontal speed of four meters per second. Ah! All right, two things will happen. Its initial velocity downwards is zero. It will be acted on by gravity it will continue to fall downwards for a period of time until it hits the ground. During that entire event, it will travel at 4 meters per second horizontally. All right, let's see what question they're going to ask. How much time is required for the stone to reach the level ground below? Okay, we don't need the 4 meters per second because we're just dealing with up and down. So let's get this. Uh, initial velocity is zero, acceleration uh, we know distance. Distance is 50 meters. And we're looking for time. Initial velocity is zero. Going downwards is important. You knew we were going to use this formula sheet eventually. And here's this. It's a real popular equation. Distance equals VIT plus one-half AT squared. Distance equals VIT plus one-half AT squared. VI is zero. So distance equals one-half AT squared. 2 times distance divided by the acceleration. Square root of that. That's the time. Get our calculator out. Wait a minute. This is part 1. I don't need a count. Let's do this. The square root of 2 times distance. Well, distance is 52 times that's 100. Divided by 9.8. Let's just call that 10. So basically we're looking for the square root of 10. Let's look at our answers. We've got uh, 3 and change. 5. 10 and 12. I wonder which one's the answer. There it is. Oh, I hope you didn't get sucked in by this one. On the surface of the Earth, a spacecraft has a mass of 2 times 10 to the 4 kilograms. What is the mass? Mass doesn't change. It never will change I mean, unless you take pieces off of the thing. The mass isn't changing. The weight will change, but not the mass. Kilograms we're looking for... 2.0 times 10 to the 4 kilograms. Oh, I hope you didn't miss that one. A student pulls a 60 newton sled with a force having a magnitude of 20 newtons. All right, so 60 newtons is the weight of the sled. You could divide that by the acceleration due to gravity. It's going to have a mass of about 6 kilograms. And... Um, with a force of a magnitude of 20 newtons. So he's pulling with 20 newtons. He's not lifting the thing, he's just pulling it. What is the magnitude of the force that the sled exerts on the student? Okay, well this is action-reaction. If he pulls with 20 newtons in one direction, the sled has to have a resistance or a, a, a reactionary force in the other direction of 20 newtons. For every action force, there's a reaction force of 20 newtons. So I'm going with 20 newtons there, and I'm done with the first page. I think this is easy but I've done these before.